we have here a case emphasizing compliance with the requisites for perfection of an appeal in labor cases. Pacific Royal Basic Foods Inc. v. Noche Pacific Royal Basic Foods Inc. or Pacific Royal is a company that makes, processes, and sells coconut goods for export. It hired Violeta and a few other people as coconut pairs. Pacific Royal received complaints about a product contamination incident from some of its clients. In response to the complaints, Pacific Royal sent letters to Violeta and her group. Violeta and some of her co-employees said that they had nothing to do with product contamination when they answered Pacific Royal's letters. Pacific Royal still dismissed Violeta and her group from employment, which prompted the latter to file a complaint against Pacific Royal for illegal dismissal. The Office of the Labor Arbiter ruled that Violeta and her group were regular employees who were illegally dismissed from employment. According to the Office of the Labor Arbiter, Pacific Royal failed to establish specific circumstances of the infractions allegedly committed by Violeta and her group. The said office also found that Violeta and her group were likewise not informed of and given opportunity to explain their alleged violation of company policies and regulations on quality control, poor work performance, and repeated defiance of lawful orders of their superiors. The Office of the Labor Arbiter directed the reinstatement of Violeta and her group. They were also awarded back wages and attorney's fees. Pacific Royal appealed the decision of the Office of the Labor Arbiter. The National Labor Relations Commission reversed the ruling of the Office of the Labor Arbiter. Record showed that Pacific Royal filed a motion to reduce bond before the National Labor Relations Commission. However, the Commission did not act on the same. The Commission nonetheless resolved Pacific Royal's appeal and found that Violeta and her group failed to dispute the fact of product contamination and was unable to show any ill motive on Pacific Royal's part in charging them with causing such contamination. The Commission considered the difficulties of a food product export industry, which demanded a higher degree of cooperation and concern from the employees. According to the Commission, Violeta and her group were indifferent to such difficulties of Pacific Royal. In fact, some of them did not even participate in the investigation when they opted not to respond to the letters sent to them. The Commission classified Violeta and her group's conduct as gross negligence since they were not new to their jobs and were even expected to know fully well the consequences of food product contamination to the company, its employees, and public health. Violeta and her group filed a petition for certiorari before the Court of Appeals. The imputed grave abuse of discretion on the part of the Commission for entertaining Pacific Royal's appeal. In addition to their assertion of illegality of their dismissal from employment, Violeta and her group pointed out that Pacific Royal failed to timely post the requisite appeal bond as the same was posted only almost a month after the appeal period had lapsed. The Court of Appeals granted the petition of Violeta and her group. It found that Pacific Royal did not find any proof of compliance with the required posting of an appeal bond. According to the Court of Appeals, Pacific Royal's appeal before the Commission should have been deemed not perfected, and such Commission did not acquire jurisdiction over Pacific Royal's appeal. The Court of Appeals stressed that Pacific Royal cannot rely on the presumption of regularity in the Commission's performance of official duties. Pacific Royal filed before the Supreme Court its petition for review and certiorari to assail the decision of the Court of Appeals. Pacific Royal asserted, among others, that the inaction of the National Labor Relations Commission on its motion to reduce bond, coupled with the Commission's resolution of the case on all its substantial points, was tantamount an implied affirmance of the perfection of the appeal. The Supreme Court was confronted with the issue of whether there is a need for the Commission to expressly rule on motions filed by the employer to reduce appeal bond. Or could it imply the approval of such motion to reduce bond by way of the disposal of the appeal by final decision, order, or resolution suffice as a grant of the employer's motion to reduce bond? The Supreme Court in this case emphasized the need for an express ruling by the National Labor Relations Commission on the appellant's motion to reduce bond. The Court reiterated established principles as follows. Appeals by an employer before the National Labor Relations Commission of decisions by the Office of the Labor Arbiter that involve monetary awards to an employee must be secured by a cash or surety bond in the full amount of the monetary award. By way of exception, the payment of this full amount may be excused if the appealing employer files a motion to reduce bond showing meritorious grounds and upon a posting of a bond in a reasonable amount. McBurney v. Ganson has already set the reasonable amount of the provisional reduced bond at 10% of the monetary award, excluding the amount of damages and attorney's fees, if any. 
The court stated that McBurney requires the concurrence of the following conditions before an aggrieved employer appealing before the National Labor Relations Commission may be allowed to post a bond in a reduced amount. Number one, the employer appellant files a motion to reduce bond. Number two, the motion to reduce bond shall be based on meritorious grounds. Number three, the employer appellant posts the provisional percentage of at least 10% of the monetary award, excluding therefrom the award of damages and attorney's fees. Number four, the provisional bond must be posted within the reglementary period for appeal. And number five, if the National Labor Relations Commission eventually determines that a greater or the full amount of the bond shall be posted, the employer appellant shall comply accordingly within 10 days from notice of the order issued by the Commission directing such posting of the increased or full amount of the bond. Once these are complied with, the aggrieved employer's appeal of the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision before the National Labor Relations Commission shall be deemed perfected. The court further noted that the requisites laid down by McBurney also presupposes a sixth requirement, that the National Labor Relations Commission issue an express ruling on the appellant's motion to reduce bond. In the present case, the Supreme Court found that Pacific Royal's motion to reduce bond was never acted upon by the National Labor Relations Commission. Still, the Commission resolved Pacific Royal's appeal of the labor arbiter's decision on the merits and issued its own resolutions thereon. However, the Court stressed that Section 6, Rule 6 of the 2011 NLRC Rules of Procedure, as amended, provides that an appeal may be perfected by the appellant employer only by the posting of a bond in the equivalent amount of the full monetary award granted to the appellee employee. The Court then repeated that the perfection of an appeal in the manner and within the period set by law is not only mandatory but jurisdictional. Consequently, for the court, there should be no implied approval of a jurisdictional requirement that has not been complied with. Otherwise, the court said, the ground of lack of jurisdiction becomes a waivable defect in procedure. Whether the National Labor Relations Commission accepts or rejects the appellant's motion to reduce bond, the ruling must be unequivocal, and such ruling must be issued before or at the time the Commission resolves the appeal by final judgment. Failure to do so shall render the National Labor Relations Commission liable for grave abuse of discretion for having ruled on an appeal without acquiring jurisdiction over the same, and the judgment it had issued shall be vacated as null and void. The court further stated that Pacific Royal should not rely on the mere presumption of regularity in the performance of official duties in favor of the National Labor Relations Commission when the latter gave due course to its appeal, not when it is faced with a serious imputation of non-compliance from Violeta and her group. Considering that the requirements provided under the Labor Code of the Philippines and its implementing rules are mandatory for purposes of perfecting an appeal, the rule on presumption of regularity cannot apply. The Supreme Court affirmed the decision of the Court of Appeals and explained that in setting aside the ruling of the National Labor Relations Commission, it is merely exercising prudence in applying the provisions of the law.